Are you ready to accelerate the growth of your business? Welcome to the Revenue Growth Podcast. This is the place for business owners, sales leaders, and marketing professionals to get ideas and inspiration to drive exponential revenue growth. Each week, you'll get actionable insights from the world's leading marketing and sales thought leaders and practitioners. Are you ready to grow? Let's join our host, Daryl Amy, author of Revenue Growth Engine. Welcome back to the Revenue Growth Podcast. I'm your host, Daryl Amy, trailblazer and growth architect. We have got a great conversation teed up for you today. I can't wait for you to meet brand strategist and all around great guy, Mark Gutman. We're going to have a lot of fun. Wow, it is the beginning of October. Q4 is here. It's time to get it done. I know if I have any football fans in the house, this is a great time of year for football. We know when we get to the fourth quarter, it's time to make it happen and uh, make sure we win the game. And that's certainly true when it comes to sales and marketing. So I want to let you know at the Revenue Growth Podcast, my goal is to bring you actionable ideas and insight that can help you grow revenue. And we've got a great lineup of guests coming your way in the fourth quarter. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, And as we're heading into the fourth quarter, we've been talking about this for weeks now, but we are now right in the middle here on October 6th. We're right in the middle of the 2021 Trust Building Challenge. This is geared at sales leaders, but I tell you, if you're a marketing professional, a company founder, uh, a CEO, you're going to love the Trust Challenge. It is five days ending on Friday. And by the way, if you're listening to this at some amazing date in the future, no worries. You can also go to 2021trustchallenge.com Sign up and we're going to have five days of amazing coaching from some of the top thought leaders um, and practitioners out there who are going to help us accelerate speed to heart. It's going to be fantastic. uh, And you want to be a part of that 2021 trustchallenge.com. Um, I want I want you to go. It's absolutely free. Thanks to our friends at Bomb Bomb. And by the way, a special thanks to our sponsor for this episode, Selling from the Heart. If you have a sales team and you want to boost results, you need to get to know Selling from the Heart. And what's great about Selling from the Heart is how it takes a different approach to driving sales. The goal is to build trust quickly with prospects and clients through authenticity, and the results are fantastic. Higher close rates, more effective prospecting, more referrals, and best of all, Selling from the Heart works with your existing sales model. So to learn more, simply go to sellingfromtheheart.net and make sure to listen to me and my co-host, Larry Levine, on the Selling from the Heart podcast every Saturday morning. It's a lot of fun. Well, I promised you we have a great episode lined up today. I want to, in a moment, introduce you to my new friend, Mark Gutman. Uh, You know, from the moment that we wake up and the moment we go to bed, we're influenced by branding. It's just the way it is. What shirt am I going to wear? What car am I going to drive? What marketing firm, what beer, what's a long list of things that are decided by brand. So starting in his his career as screenwriter uh, with an Academy Award-winning director, Oliver Stone, Mark Gutman knows how to blend storytelling, psychology, and design to help brands outmaneuver their competition. So he's an entrepreneur, a speaker, a social media influencer, everything you would expect from an amazing brand strategist. So without further ado, let's welcome Mark Gutman to the Revenue Growth Podcast. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Daryl, it's awesome. Thanks for having me. I'm not sure who wrote that intro, but uh, it was amazing. So I I, I want you to keep reading about me. That was great. Well, this is exactly the point of today's conversation, though, is we all have a brand personally and as companies and the way we go about telling the story. And by yeah, whoever wrote that story, it's a pretty good story there uh, to lead into it. But what would it what would it look like? What could it look like? What should it look like if companies were able to lead into situations with a brand story like that? Tell me why you got how'd you get passionate about helping companies really design and tell their brand story? Yeah, well, you know, I grew up in Detroit. We were talking about that a little bit in the green room. And um, while it was a great place to grow up, nothing 
really ever happened, you know? And so my whole uh, contextual way of looking at the world came through movies. I thought that's what the world was. I thought, you know, I thought California was the greatest place on earth because why every movie and TV show showcases California. And mm -hmm. so right when I got done with college and, uh, and enjoying my football season there, I, not that I played, but I was a huge fan. I go went out, yeah, go blue. I went out to California and, and worked in the movie business and I loved it. And, you know, I fell in. You mentioned I, I worked for Oliver Stone as a story editor. I wrote a couple screenplays, Fine. worked at Warner Brothers on some animation projects, but I'd always had um, a love and a desire to get back to the, the mountains. I was also a little bit young and I was trying to like figure out what I wanted to do with my life, you know? And so I'd learned this thing called story. I was enamored by it, but I came here and, you know, date myself a little bit, but people weren't telling their own story very well. There wasn't all these social channels, but the thing that was mm -hmm. happening in the Boulder area, at least, was there was this amazing startup movement. And it was it was, it was a new cool thing. We didn't know what mm -hmm. entrepreneurs and startups were. And I was like, now these people, these are cool people. These are the people I want to hang out with. And so uh, I had started my own uh, tech firm, actually. Uh, it was an arbitrage kind of reseller of collaboration services. And I'd had that for many years. And ultimately sold it. Um, and two things were going on at that time. I wasn't the best entrepreneur, but I loved branding and marketing. So that's where I was putting all my energy into that business. And then people kept coming up to me and saying, hey, Mark, can you help me tell my story? You worked in the movie business. I was like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I, 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 let's do that. And then it would like end very badly because neither of us, <laughs> and, 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 there's still, and there's still kind of this problem today. We do ourselves a disservice. There isn't a real definition of what does tell my story mean? You know, if mm -hmm. you have 10 people come up to me and say, can you help me tell my story? They kind of have 10 different things. Some people think it is what's on their website. Some people think it's what's on their social media or their keynote or it's their brand or it's their mission, vision and value. So, you know, what, what I've come to learn and over the years that it's all those things and, and, and organizing it and putting it together so that we can go out and use it to help grow our businesses. Because the one thing I want people really to know who are, are listening about this today is that, you know, branding and brand storytelling, it's all about selling. You know, we're on mm -hmm. the revenue growth podcast. Mm -hmm. I mean, what we're, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to sell. Even if you're a nonprofit, you're trying to sell to your people that are giving you uh, fundraising and donations and things like that and rolling into your mission. Most of the companies I work with are dot coms. But, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to sell with this stuff. And so going through a lot of failures, but also a lot of successes, realize that really the foundation and, and a lot of uh, parallels to the movie business is about this really strong foundation, really strong brand strategy, brand platform that we then use to communicate with our words, uh, that we use to communicate with visuals. And then we get to do the, what I would argue is the really fun part once we know who we are and what we want to talk about. And that's the storytelling. And that's when we get to go out and tell everyone about what we do. And, 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 and I want to challenge everyone to think about like when you're really confident personally, not your company, but when you when you're into something new or, um, you know, there, there's, I'm not into CrossFit, but what's the, what's the joke about CrossFitters? Uh, how long does it take for someone to tell you they're into CrossFit? Wait two seconds and they'll tell you. You know, it's, they're so excited about it because mm -hmm. they believe in it and they found who they are at that moment in time. And I feel the same thing is a lot like a business. Once you know who you are, once you found what you do, what you stand for, you can then go out and you get to start telling people about it. We can talk about how to do that as well. I love it. I love it. And and so I'm, I'm sitting here. This is such a great conversation. However, um, you know, I in my sales DNA, I know I have some sales leaders listening in. Um, and here's the script that's going on in their head. Come on, Daryl. This is about results and revenue growth. Like, why are we talking about this fluff about branding? Can't we have someone on the podcast today to talk about how to close more business, get it, you know, and all of that. You're saying, Daryl, we got to get it done in 2021. Why are we talking about storytelling? So I want to hear from you why you think companies that tell their story and invest in their brands are always going to win out over the ones that don't pay attention to that, that just go, ah, we can close some business. Brand doesn't matter. Yeah. And, and look, for all those sales leaders, you know better than anybody. Nothing's really changed in sales. It's not a transactional relationship. It's, it's a relationship that has value, trust, and meaning. And so what we're doing with brand is we're, we're creating trust. You know, my, one of my mentors and teachers, uh, the great Marty Neumeyer, who's, who's really well known in, in brand circles, he says that marketing is all about meaning, right? That mattering is the new marketing. And how do we get people to trust 
know and like us. So it's through your brand. I mean, all you, all these sales leaders, you go and you show up in the cool new outfit, the cool new suit. You sometimes wear a Rolex, like all that to communicate something about mm -hmm. you and your brand. And so why are they going to win out? Because look, I don't know what your experience is, but I can tell you hands down my experiences that like anybody can knock off anybody in whatever industry at any time. And if they're not doing that, there's only a short window of time before mm -hmm. you have a competitive advantage and before your competitors catch up, yep. start to re, re, you know, reverse engineer, start to copy your marketing speak. So, you know, yes, we have to show up a certain way from results standpoint. We have to show up for a certain way in our category with features and, and benefits and things like that. But really at the end of the day, the only thing you can own, the only thing you can protect, uh, unless you have patents and things like that, right? Is your brand and your brand story and, and what makes you special. You know, I have, I'm wearing this, this, this hat right now and it says be brilliant and where that came out of was i take my young daughter ruby to the bus stop every day and as ruby was getting out of the car i looked at her and i don't know where this came from because i don't use the word brilliant or anything but i said you be brilliant love it and she said no dad you be brilliant <laughs> and it hit me and for me what that was was i'm not telling her to go get straight a's i'm not mm -hmm. telling her to be an amazing student what i'm actually telling her to do is lean into her brilliance be yourself be what makes you special and that's going to be an attractor and, and that's the same thing i tell businesses that's what i want them to know that's what i want your salespeople to know that when you really lean into who you are when you really lean into your brand story that's what attracts you to your potential customers prospects and clients ah Brilliant. I really love that. Yeah, I'm having flashbacks, by the way, when I drop my son off at school, who's now a senior and graduating, I still say the same thing every time I say be a leader. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because saying be brilliant, be a leader, um, all of that, those are, you know, and then backing that up with years and years of repetition, right? Now he's got 17 years um, of whatever the school years were, math on that, 12 years of hearing be a leader. Um, and guess what's happening? The kid's a leader, right? He's turning into an amazing young man. And I think there's some parallel to this branding of, of saying, hey, we're going to, you know, what story is your company telling? So here's what I want to ask you. And, and I want to get a little practical if you'd be willing to coach us for a second. Um, let's say, let's say I'm a company um, and, and I go, yeah, you know what, Mark, I get it. I get it. I need to, uh, we need to tell our story better, but uh, you know, we're running a company here. We're really good at making and distributing widgets or doing this service or, you know, selling this software. Like we're, uh, we're not movie producers around here. Um, you know, we're not, uh, you know, we're, we're not living on Madison Avenue. Um, you know, we're, we're next to a cornfield or we're in, uh, you know, we're in San Antonio or wherever. What, yeah. what, where do we start? Like, where do we start to unpack and discover our unique story in all of this. Like coach us to just like, how would you coach us to begin? Yeah, and there's, there's two things here that, that we're talking about. You know, we have a strategy of like, what, what stories do we tell? Where do we get those stories? Mm -hmm. And then tactically, how do we tell that story? Mm. Now, the good news is I'll jump right to the how, because that's easy, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a movie producer. Mm -hmm. Everybody has one of these. Everyone mm -hmm. knows how to communicate in today's world. Man, we're just talking about our kids. My kids, they're movie producers. Like when they do a school right. project, it's like full. I'm like, how did you do that? That was like high def multimedia, you know, like <laughs> Apple just literally right. announced their new phones and every feature is around video. So I'm not really worried it's about people. cinema. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The real question to ask is when someone comes and they're like, all right, I, I'm going to tell my story for the business. I'm going to tell my brand story. And they go like, what do I say? That's mm -hmm. the real challenge, right? People don't mm -hmm. know what story to tell. And so, and that's really what we do in the branding process. So we start with what we call the brand DNA. And a lot of people are probably really familiar with that. And that's like your mission, your vision, your values, your beliefs, the commitments you're going to make and then stand behind. Because, you know, here's the thing that like, we just all have to admit, and you might have, there, this might be the elephant in the room that, you know, to some of these sales leaders and experienced people that have gone through a branding process. We all sit in a room for a couple of days, maybe a week. We've got post-it notes everywhere. We run out, we're like, yes, we've got a new purpose. We got a mission, we got a vision. But if you're not then going out and doing the hard, dirty work of telling people what that is 
and then backing it up and living up to that, mm -hmm. none of it's going to work. So the, the biggest thing is, you know, we work on that brand DNA, but then we get really, really clear about who our customer is. Mm -hmm. First, what is that story that they're telling about themselves? that makes them the hero of their own story when using our products and services. And then I also really like to think like, after they've done business with us, what value through storytelling can we offer them that has nothing to do with our direct products and services? Meaning we're not talking about our products and services, but we're adding value around the thing or the interest mm -hmm. that brought them that brought them into our world. You know, And I think that's what you see companies who are doing this right. They're doing that all the time. They're telling all sorts of stories. It's become actually a little commonplace to see all sorts of companies telling like human interest stories, lifestyle stories. That's mm -hmm. cool and things like that. But look, I mean, you can tell stories about your values. You can tell stories about your beliefs. Um, we actually have a um, manifesto builder download somewhere on our website, which is nice. which is great. And 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 we say use that to hit these beats in your manifesto. Your mm. manifesto is just a just a compact story, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, what, what do we value? What are our beliefs? What change, you know, what, what are we passionate about? Those are all great stories to tell because a lot of people tell the, the product story pretty well, right? Like, I mean, we, we kind of know our products and services, but th there's a much bigger story than that. And, you know, if you're stuck mm -hmm. on it, I really want you to think about what are the stories you tell in your personal life about yourself to mm -hmm. further, your own, further your own brand? Mm -hmm. You know, you're not one thing. And, and, and matter of fact, Daryl, if all you did was come in every cocktail party you went to and talked about your podcast, you'd be the guy that like, you know, as soon as he walks in the room, everyone goes the other way. Right. right no one wants exactly. No, right. But, but I, I do imagine, cause I have a podcast and this happens to me. I do have people that are interested in that. And I do, mm -hmm. that, that is one story I tell, I talk about it to those that are interested. And so really thinking about that in terms of, of how you tell stories in your business. Um, you know, if you want to talk tactically. You know, we all have tools. My, my one piece of advice is outside of knowing where your audience lives. So for example, you know your audience likes to consume audio content, maybe some video content, but are they on LinkedIn? Are they on different social channels? My only other sort of practical piece of advice is show up and put a priority on where you can be consistent. So I can give you a little, a little example of that. I have this like secret fantasy. I want to be like a like a famous YouTuber. <laughs> and I want to be, you know, I want to be like and every teenager in America and around the world. Right. Yeah. That's, that's kind of my intellect <laughs> level. I'm, a, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm like the average American teenager, but I can't kind of bring myself to consistently create video content of that caliber. Not only mm -hmm. that, I don't like editing it. I don't like scripting it. It just takes a lot. But so right. while I think that's a great channel for me, I'm a writer and so I lean into my strengths and you'll see like I'm very active on Instagram of all places and I don't post design. I'm not a designer, I'm a writer. And so I found a way of taking the 10 slide carousel format on Instagram and I create these like little almost e-zine carousels mm -hmm. of branding tips, right? Mm -hmm. Is that the best place? I don't know. But what I do know is that it gives me energy I can show up there consistently mm -hmm. and I get engagement. And oh, by the way, once I built that bridge of successfully creating content, I was able to take those types, those pieces, export them as a PDF. I now upload them to LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And that is actually more interesting to people on LinkedIn because they're not seeing that type of format. And I get even more engagement using the same exact piece of content. And that's how I'm telling my story over and over again, but it's, it's the place I can show up. So if you think about like, if you kind of use the analogy, like, are you the type of person that goes and sits in a coffee shop and tells their story one-to-one? -one? Are you the consummate social media person who's always posting their whole life story on social? Like as a business, get really in tune with where you can be successful. I assume that this podcast gives you energy. It's relatively easy, all things considered, right? We know there's a lot of work here. I don't want to make it sound like there's no work to putting on a podcast, but it's easier for you to show up, mm -hmm. have these conversations in this format, and then you can keep it going because we want to have consistency yes. in our storytelling, right? Like if we don't ever tell our story and then come out with some big news, 
No one's really listening. Yeah, we haven't given any context. That? Right. Yeah. This is so good, Mark. And, you know, as I'm thinking about all this, you know, it would be really helpful, I think, to the audience is I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, can you think of a good example of a story? You know, we all know, um, I mean, we can think of Hollywood, we can think of movies and all of that and how, you know, the story is told over two hours. I can think of all kinds of TV series where they tell a story over 20, 30, whatever binge watch episodes. Uh, but in the context of, of a business, like what's a good example of how a business, maybe it's your own business or a business that you've worked with, um, tells their story? Yeah. And, you know, before we get into that, Daryl, you know, I, I think that it's really important to understand that there's different kinds of, of storytelling and, and storytelling techniques. Like, you know, I had talked in the beginning of the show why it was so difficult for me to find success working with other businesses because I thought there was only one kind of story to tell. I thought there was a cinematic three act structure, sighting incident, you know, climax, all the stuff. I know we've had some guests on the show that talk about a hero's journey. Mm -hmm. That's really applicable, but that's just one kind of story. And so I think that when we think about it, you know, you got to pick out like different types of story. You're going to tell a story about where you're going. You know, like for example, the um, the stock market is just all about people buying a future vision of where companies are going to go, good and mm -hmm. bad. You know, mm -hmm. uh, most of the values aren't about like what they really do have. All these valuations we see from unicorns, that's just a story we're telling about about where we're going. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there, you know, the customer journey is a total story. Hey, you know, I'm I'm starting in this spot. I am unhappy. And I'm going to come use your product and that's going to make me happier. That's going to make me feel like a better father mm -hmm. or that's going to make me feel cooler. So once we start to understand that, my definition of brand story is it's all these little stories and in, in, in a story framework that are working together. And it's not just one story, but the, but the brands that I think are telling the stories their best, they're the ones that always make me say I'm a dot, dot, dot person, meaning I'm a Tesla person. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm a Nike person. Mm -hmm. I'm an Apple person mm -hmm. because I see myself as made up of like all these brands and they're all like, and this is one thing I do want people to realize. And I think salespeople are like, no one's waking up continuously just thinking about your products and services. You're just one part of sort of the totality of the things that they're trying to accomplish in their lives. You're just solving one problem for them. And at any given time, it's important or not important. I think Tesla does an amazing job of telling their story. I am a Tesla owner and man, do they make me feel cool. Do they <laughs> they make me feel like I am part of the solution, that I'm leading edge mm. and that I'm helping on their mission to move the world towards more sustainable transportation. Beautiful. That's the story they're telling and I am in it and I believe in it. Now they've got all these other things. They've got innovation and tech and all this other stuff, right? But that's just one of the, the key stories that they, they love to tell. I'm a Patagonia person. I love, you know, they tell the story like, hey, we build great, great clothes, great outerwear, right? So that's one story they tell. But the story we all know that they are really about is, hey, we stand up for the environment. We fight for water rights. We are going to fight for what we believe is going to be right. And we are trying to get people to consume less. Mm -hmm. and those stories go on and on and on. And if you're doing it right, you're kind of telling the same themes, not the same story. But the right. same themes over and over again. And I just love to imagine like the brand manager at Patagonia being like, you know, can we just talk about something else besides, right. you know, water rights or like <laughs> don't buy this jacket and the leadership. Right. Like, nope. Nope. Yep. Just keep hitting that over and over different, again. Different stories. Yeah. Different stories. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because uh, Tesla, um, Patagonia, I'm an Apple fanatic. I mean, I'm, you know, and I identify with that brand. But, you know, when you think about on a smaller scale, um, and I know a lot of our listeners, you know, don't listen, don't necessarily yet have Fortune 1000 companies. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you tell your story right, uh, could happen. You know, it's interesting. I've witnessed um, the brand actually a sponsor of this week's podcast and um, the other podcasts I get to co-host Selling from the Heart. You know, the story of that brand is, you know, we grew up inside a sales profession that was not only perceived as shady and unethical and low trust and why would you want to be in sales, but we truly believe that sales 
doesn't have to be that way, that sales can be, should be, and um, authentic, that sales should be genuine, and that there is a growing community of sales professionals that want to be genuine, authentic, add real value. And, you know, in Selling from the Heart, we get to tell that story. And it's the story of so many different people we call Selling from the Heart champions, right? People who uh, have said, yeah, that's, you know, that's me. Just like you with Patagonia would say, yeah, or Tesla, that's me. I want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Um, you know, and it's not even so much about the car, although the car is incredible and the acceleration is phenomenal for you. It sounds like it's more about, you know, attaching yourself to or the way the brand is attached itself to a story you're already wanting to tell yourself, which is being a part of the problem, not part or being a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. And uh, but I'm seeing that happen, um, that type of, of brand identity happening with selling from the heart. And it's interesting because normally, you know, we talk about like giftology and different things like that. You don't want to send someone something with your brand on it. Um, but uh, Patagonia, they got people wanting to buy stuff with their brand on it. Um, we're even getting people that want selling from the heart merch. Like they want, they want to wear it because it's a, and I think that, you know, maybe that's one of the, maybe that's one of the questions we should ask. I know I'm rambling on here, Mark, but maybe this is one of the questions we should ask is like, have I told my story in such a good enough way that, that we could start a swag store that people would want to buy into, into it. Just like I slap the Apple sticker on stuff, right? They, they send me a sticker every time I buy one of their gadgets. Um, you know, is the story compelling enough that your company is telling whether you're Tesla or whether you're, you know, a small business or wherever you're a nonprofit is the story good enough that someone would actually want to shop at your swag store? Yeah, I think that's a great metric uh, to have. <laughs> and look, I, I don't want people to be scared about this and think that they have to tell the perfect story. Mm -hmm. It's really about telling your story now. And if it's meaningful to you and you're building a business around it, there's probably you're probably solving a need. So we mm -hmm. figured that out. You're solving a problem. Then it becomes tell your story. And Daryl, I love that story about selling from the heart because you have a very specific worldview. People, you know, they're, they're not so much buying anymore, right? They're mm. choosing. Oh, I love and, that. You know, they, they're, they're choosing. Or aligning. Who, they're lining up. Well, they're choosing right? who to align with yep. and choosing yep. who not to align with. Because by yeah. the time someone gets to you and wants to use your services, they know they have a sales problem, right? Mm -hmm. They know they feel icky. They know it's not working for them. They know they've right. kind of been going down the wrong path. Now it's like, well, is it is it your methodology or maybe a competitor who's similar or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and 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 they want to get to know you and they want to understand where you come from. And I love that, like, hey, we've been where you've been. We understand mm -hmm. you kind of story. And that's another one kind of story we could tell. Mm -hmm. That's a great story to tell. Hey, we were there. We're just mm -hmm. like you. We grew up in a sales organization where it felt real icky. And I don't like that. I want to help people. I'm on a mission to actually help people with what I'm selling. I'm not trying to push anything. I'm trying to offer things to help solve problems. You know, that kind of message. And that's what and that's what resonates. And that's what we feel uh, when we go ahead and choose and align and become. And you know you're doing it well, yes, when you can sell branded merch. When you start <laughs> building a community of people, right? Yes. Yeah, that, that goes beyond the transaction of, of, of what you're of what you're selling, that you are really turning this into a movement of sorts. And that movement doesn't have to be like, I'm not talking about like some massive world changing movement. I'm just talking about inertia and momentum where people start to really rally around your products and services. You know, I, I just committed to running a marathon not that long ago, hadn't run probably in 15 years. All start, right. Well, thank you. And I start getting into running gear and, um, you know, I go to the retail store and, you know, I get this whole story about Hoka and how Hoka is like, you know, these great shoes and I, and I buy these shoes and now I'm getting pulled into their orbit, mm -hmm. right? I've only bought the shoes once, mm -hmm. but I use them a lot and things like that. But now I'm kind of looking to go, how, how do I find other Hoka heads? That's not even a thing. I just said that Hoka heads, but I think that's kind of funny. And like, how do I find other people that are like, you know, in this space and, you know, and, and, and by the way, that's just what's going on for me right now. This right. is always like a moving target. But yeah, it's about bringing people into your community, aligning them with, with your vision, your beliefs, uh, where you're going as a company beyond that like real functional problem that you solve. 
And I'm thinking of a, a local restaurant that came up with you know, a restaurant. Talk about a competitive business, right? I mean, you know, how many places in your city can you go out to eat? Uh, but they came up with a compelling story about wanting to alleviate world hunger. And so they named their store Tacos for Life. That the, the name of the, the restaurant is a brand story, right? And yeah. every time you buy a meal, you know, your, uh, your help, you're buying a meal for someone in a in a um, hunger, hunger, uh, where there's a hunger problem in the world. And, um, and you walk in, the story is on the wall. And guess what they have? They got t-shirts, <laughs> right? Yeah. And uh, you want you want to buy the t-shirt. You don't just buy the taco. Tacos are great, but you can get a good taco just about anywhere. But you buy the t-shirt. And now, now you're, you're, you're not just saying, I, I like the food. You're aligning with the story that they're telling. And so you know, the interesting thing is it doesn't matter whether you're Tesla, whether you're Patagonia, whether you're selling for the heart, tacos for life. Um, every business has a story and, and you know, and, and being able to tell that story may be the one thing that you can do to create sustainable competitive advantage in a world, as you said at the beginning, where you know, anybody can copy you and you're competing in a, in a, in a red ocean uh, of similar competitors, the story may be the thing that pl pulls you out to that blue uh, space in the ocean where you really can succeed. Couldn't have said it any better. Yeah, I mean, getting <laughs> back to it, it's it's really great. Thanks, Joe. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, marketing is about meaning, right? Mm -hmm. It's about mattering, and and that mm -hmm. tacos for life is an ex an amazing example, right? Like like it's about meaning. Anyone can sell a taco, right? Right. It's kind of back to my point. Like we're kind of like at a point where anybody can do, I hate to break it to everybody, right? But like, there's mm -hmm. not a whole lot of new stuff. What do we do now as like uh, professional services firms? We, right. we brand our phases and we right. and, and we come <laughs> up with catchy names and that's all cool. Right. And that helps, you know, helps people understand mm -hmm. it and buy it. But like, let's, you know, is anyone coming up with these like revolutionary new techniques? Not typically, you know, it takes, you know, so mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, you know, but the one thing that no one can come up with, the one thing that no one can replicate when you're a professional services firm, no one can replicate you and your team, the people, the energy, the what you bring to it, your personality, when you're a product or service, nobody can replicate your vision, your passion, your purpose. And so that's why those things are so, so important to infuse into your business so you can connect with more customers and sell more stuff, right? Because brand strategy really is it has a job mm -hmm. and we can you know and, and this is the revenue growth podcast and that job of your brand is to sell more stuff to more people at a higher price for as long as possible that's well, it let's just let's think about these that these companies we're using as examples apple tesla patagonia patagonia is not selling shirts on a discount rack for 5.95 right <laughs> apple is not um doing a 70 percent off sale on their uh their laptops or iphones and uh, neither is tesla it's, it's, there's a premium uh that is earned because of the story and so you know i uh, going back to the beginning of this conversation when i was saying hey sales leaders you know you may think you, if you think this is fluff hang with us because you know, like, do you have challenges closing business? Do you have challenges maintaining margin? Maybe, maybe you need to take a look at your story. Uh, so good. Mark, how can, uh, we'll put this in the show notes, but how can people learn more about your story and uh, get get a hold of, uh, of that uh, tool you talked about earlier in the show? Yeah, I'm just like a CrossFitter. Wait two seconds, and I'll tell you. Right, <laughs> but right. Uh, uh, I'd expect uh, nothing less. <laughs> that's right. If you if you want to get in, in touch with me, I've made it really really simple. Uh, we've created a, a show landing page at wildstory.com/slash/goodstuff, and awesome. that's where the that's where the good stuff is. And you can connect with me on Instagram, there, LinkedIn. We have a free three minute uh, health audit. You can really quickly get your score, see you know, where you stand from a branding perspective, um, and and all sorts of resources. So go ahead and connect with me there wildstory.com slash good stuff. Fantastic. Mark, thank you so much for investing in us today. And uh, thank you for sharing your story. It's been fantastic. Well, Daryl, thank you so much for having me. And thank you to everyone who's listening out on the Revenue Growth Podcast. All right. Well, and thank you. Uh, exactly. I'll just echo what Mark said. Thank you to everybody 
who is listening in uh, on the Revenue Growth Podcast. Thank you to everybody who is sharing this podcast. If you know a sales leader, marketing leader, business owner, uh, entrepreneur that would benefit from uh, telling their story better, maybe they've got a great story, uh, but they just don't tell it as well as you think they could, uh, share this podcast, share it on LinkedIn, share it on your social channels. And uh, thank you to everybody who's leaving a review because that helps us spread the word as well. At Revenue Growth Podcast, we're passionate about helping generous leaders grow their business so they can give back. And that's a part of our story. I tell at the beginning of the Revenue Growth Engine book, if you'd like a copy of that book, just go to revenuegrowthengine.net and uh, I'll send you an autograph copy if you'll pay the shipping and handling, revenuegrowthengine.net. We've got a fantastic line of guests lined up for this fall. So make sure to subscribe on YouTube or on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen in. And uh, I want to encourage you to go check out the Trust Building Challenge. Once again, it's going on October 4th through 8th. But if you listen in later, no worries. We're going to make a recording of all the sessions. And it's high value that you're going to want for yourself, your sales team, and your marketing team. So once again, thank you to everybody. We'll see you next week. And until next time, let's get going and let's get growing.